here are five moments of reflection and, and sadness, but out of sadness for me comes joy. Sometimes when you're feeling uh, low, when you have a memory of someone, someone maybe lost personally, romantically, musically, you, you, it's for me at least, it's good to channel that and put on a record and sometimes a dark record or a sad record brings it out and not quite sure why, why I'm going here now uh, and even why I'm laughing. Is it a nervous laughter? Uh, but I think um, the music, the emotional side of music, and it's the music stupid, um, really applies uh, what I'm trying to express here. And I know I'm not going to express it perfectly or actually how I am imagining it right now. But uh, these five records come out of uh, a love lost, a, a personal loss, a uh, musical musician's loss, and about love and death, uh, spirituality. I may not be religious, but I feel I'm somewhat uh, spiritual in a certain way. And I'm kind of going in chronological order of these records. First, obviously, is uh, a lot of these are, are obvious choices uh, that many other people may have uh, grabbed onto for various reasons, not all uh, for the same reasons. And uh, I want to start out with 1974. In fact, I got two records in 1974, Blood on the Tracks, of a, a loss of romance, a loss of love, uh, maybe Dylan's most introspective record, Blood in the Tracks from 1974. Just every song on here uh, either tells a story of... It, it, it's really a personal journey, but it's uh, in sometimes stories, and it's not as precise or not as obvious as one might imagine sometimes. Uh, the various different covers, we know the whole history of uh, Bob Dylan... Uh, changing, re-recording half the things between New York and Minneapolis, Minnesota. But the songs on here, Tangle Up in Blue, uh, just the way it opens up. I mean, not only is this, this might be the best recorded uh, records, and that's why uh, even people who aren't enamored with uh, Bob Dylan's voice will sort of latch on to this album, maybe before every other album. Maybe they'll go through that nasal Lay Lady Lay from Natural Skyline. But also a simple twist of fate on here just continues uh, that storyline, You're a Big Girl Now, about this one particular uh, relationship that uh, he was having when uh, he was having tumultuous times with his marriage to Sarah. Uh, You're going to make me lonesome when you go. Meet me in the morning. On and on and on, buckets of rain. A, a, a gorgeous, romantic heart. It tugs on your heart, this album. Bob Dylan's 1974, Blood on the Tracks. Now, this album is probably more emotional to me, although there are different levels. It's an emotional. This is Grievous Angel by Graham Parsons with Emmylou Harris, of course, also from 1974. Uh, this was released just slightly after uh, the death of uh, the tragic loss of one of the great, you know, tempestuous, again, country rock singers, Graham Parsons, obviously bringing more country to the birds than they ever had, even though they had a country and folk roots. Uh, with the And then after Sweetheart of the Rodeo with um, Flying Burrito Brothers, and obviously the R Rolling Stones song Wild Horses had Graham Parsons in mind when that was written. But this is important a record for me. I was hired at this one record store by my friend Vernon. My friend Vernon uh, passed away. God, are we going back almost four years? No, not quite four years. And Graham Parsons, Emmylou Harris, Country Rock, the Burrito Brothers, the Birds, was our initial connection. I interviewed with him, and as soon as I said one of the genres I liked was Country Rock, he hired me. I was a young 19-year-old uh, they were two, three years uh, older than me, everyone else in the store, and was that Country Rock Connection. And this album just came out around that time, and we played this in the store. And of course, I remember, obviously, the return of the Grievous Angel. That right there uh, sets the stage of this entire album. 
lost him way too soon, but he turned me on to so much music. And I remember uh, this record playing it. There's a version of Hickory Wind on side two. It's, it goes from Cash on the Barrel Head to Hickory Wind in a sort of a faux live version. And there's an audience member there. A woman yells out something. And I remember one afternoon with Vernon at the record factory store. That was the name of the record store we worked together on. We kept playing that over and over again. So it sounds like she yells out, you're ugly, to Graham Parsons. Now, I don't know. Go check it out. Check your copy. Once you've played it and I've told you that's what we thought it was, you'll never unhear that. It sounds like she, she yells out, you're ugly, and I think it goes right into Hickory Wind. I think that's where that moment happens. But this record always brings back my uh, my love of Graham Parsons and, and um, Emily Harris, obviously. But it brings back my love for my friend uh, Vernon. And I miss you, buddy. But this album is one of those just a beautiful record anyway. And uh, should be in any kind of music collection as far as I'm concerned. You know, we lost... Tragically, in with the 2015, two major artists. And I remember buying this record. This is Black Star, David Bowie's final album. It came out on a Friday. I picked it up at a local store. But there was a song that I'd heard a different version of uh, prior to this, and that is Sue or In a Season of Crime. There's a fusion of avant garde jazz and melancholy. And this is an intense record. Of course, waking up Monday morning and hearing that uh, David Bowie had died and he had been working on this. And this is sort of his swan song, literally his his goodbye. To some people, it's a, it's an album of, of, of sorrow. It's an album of loss. It's an in-your-face assault in a beautiful way, I think. I think this is one of the most beautiful albums, maybe not musically, but the different layers and intensity. And I just love how uh, he he knew he was who was dying, and uh, the musicians didn't know. I think him and Tony Visconti uh, are the only ones who uh, worked on this record at the time that knew that uh, his death was imminent, or at least while they were working on this. But the, the, the songs, the videos from this album, this is a magnificent album, and it is a hard album for some people to listen to because of the circumstance. But Black Star of David Bowie, one of the great, great albums. It was released literally, uh, I think, on his birthday or around his birthday. So, uh, Black Star, David Bowie. In a similar vein is You Want It Darker by Leonard Cohen. Uh, this album came out approximately, I think, two and a half weeks before his death. Another record of uh, he knew imminent that he was sick and he was dying. And this is a very dark record, yet it's a majestic moody wonderful uh, recording opens up with this great song you want a darker uh, he brings in his cantor uh, from uh, the synagogue he belongs to in Montreal and there's a line in this opening song you want a dar darker uh, words by Leonard Cohen uh, the music is written by Patrick Leonard an interesting choice right there but there's a sec section in uh, sort of the chorus Hinenu Hineni that is, I'm with you, my Lord. That is, he's ready to go. He's letting go. Take me, Lord. Again, I'm spiritually connected, but not religiously connected. And that's what I love about artists like Leonard Cohen, like Nick Cave, that have this really sort of uh, connection of, uh, of spirituality, of doubt, of, of, of sexual tension uh, in their writing, in their lyrics. I just love that. Again, the, it's so beautiful. It's such a great opening piece. On the level, leaving the table, traveling light, a record by someone who uh, is saying goodbye uh, to himself and allowing himself to let go and moving on. Leonard Cohen's You Want It Darker. The record that really got me uh, thinking about this and making this video was when I played this record this morning. This is a, a beautiful uh, jazz record by Youssef Latif called Eastern Sounds. And it, it literally is just that. It's got Eastern uh, Indian Pakistani type of 
uh, Middle Eastern music overlaid with uh, this jazz. Uh, Youssef plays tenor sax, oboe, and flute. And there is a very, um, well, basically, it's, it's exactly what it says, Eastern sounds. Now, this is a, a gorgeous record, and I think someone who may not be into jazz uh, may appreciate this record if you like a, a record that, it, it, that adds some moodiness and some spirituality to all these sort of have a maybe more, some more than others a spiritual or a romantic sense of love or loss uh, with friendship again or romantic love uh, this is some something really special because when my friend coleman was uh was dying um, once we found out he was sick i think he passed in with within about eight months and i'd go down to the bay area and uh, my buddies Brooks and I would sit and play him records all day. He wouldn't allow anything else. He had to play records. He was driving everyone crazy who who lived in this house and who was helping him in the home hospice of turning records over constantly. And of course, being the big music fan, he was. And I told him about this record before. And so as a gift, the last day I saw him, I brought this album uh, to him as a gift. And we played it twice while I was there and he he loved it he just loved the mood it's really it's it's it, it's it's a peaceful record it's not out there out, uh, avant-garde jazz at all it's eastern sounds and it's it is very meditative and I think uh Coleman appreciated that but I remember uh driving home I drove uh from the Bay Area back up to Seattle and he said, oh, I'm listening to Eastern Sounds again. He texted me that. And then after about a day or two, I didn't hear from him for a while. And then about a week later, I think, maybe it was a couple of weeks later. I don't remember sort of the timeline. But he texted me, I'm listening to Eastern Sounds. And it's beautiful. I'm paraphrasing the text right now. And within a day or two, he, he passed on. So this was the last album he acknowledged to me about musically and again Coleman and I had known each other again just shy of 50 years as well so my buddy Coleman there this is what we put in all the records uh, that we curated from his collection on behalf of his sister so Eastern Sounds these are five just five beautiful records this is more of an emotional side but but when you get uh, emotionally into something like this, I think there's always room for a little levity and a little uh, a smile here and there, uh, because that's what I've had with these friends of mine who I'm discussing and talking about. Uh, but um, I'm sure Leonard Cohen and David Bowie also had a little uh, twinkle in, in their eyes and uh, with the people that they loved and shared some humor even during a time of letting go. So thanks for watching, solemn video. But uh, I think we need to share these kind of emotions sometimes. And for me, at least, and I'm sure for a lot of you, the music brings it out and brings back and rekindles these amazing memories. Uh, so Mazzy loves you. And uh, I'm going to close out with something beautiful. I hope life treats you kind. And I hope that you have all that you ever dreamed of. And I wish you joy and happiness. But above all of this, I wish you love. And I